Hello everyone and welcome. You know, for the longest time, I thought about getting into welding. In the old days, welding was a difficult and dangerous process. But with the advent of modern technology, welding has become much more accessible to even the DIY home gamer like myself. So after many years of thinking about it, I finally decided to give it a try and start doing some welding. I looked around for a long time and I finally decided to start off with this MiG-145 from Bestark. This welder seems to be very user friendly and has a lot of great reviews online. The great thing about this welder is that it has a lot of room to grow as I learn more about welding since it can do the three basic welding methods. Plus, it has a low enough price without being a cheapy welder like the Chicago Electric from Harbor Freight. So if you've been looking for a compact, lightweight, and affordable welder, stick around as I unbox and test this new 3-in-1 welder from Bestark. Alright guys, so when you unbox this puppy, this is everything you get. So let's talk a little bit about some of the features that this guy has. But before we get started testing this guy, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. That way you get notified every time I do another product review video or DIY project that you may find useful. Alright, so this is the 3-in-1 MiG-145 welder from Bestark, available on Amazon, link in description below. At the time of making this video, this kit retails for $149.99. The warranty on this guy is one year, and the dimensions are 6 inches by 9 inches by 14 inches, and this unit only weighs 13 pounds. So when you open this guy up, what do you get included with it? Well, you get the welder, the MIG torch, earth clamp, stick holder, flux and solid core wire, contact tips, gas hose, 220 to 110 adapter, shoulder strap, and the manual. This is a 3-in-1 welder that can perform gas or gasless MIG welding, lift TIG, and stick welding. So this machine gives you a lot of room to grow as a beginner, or gives you everything you need as an experienced user. This welder works on both 110 or 220 volts and can put out a maximum current of 145 amps. This welder supports gasless flux core MIG wire or solid core wire for welding. This machine uses 30 inch, 35 or 40 inch flux core wire plus 30 inch solid core wire. This welder should handle stainless steel and thick or thin high carbon steel with no problem. This welder has a digital display screen to make it easy to make any adjustments that you need. This welder has Synergy control where it adopts IGBT and integrated wire feed technology to automatically match the recommended voltage and wire speed. Plus the user can also press the adjustment knob to individually adjust the voltage plus or minus 3 volts, making it convenient for both beginners and professionals. So this welder is an economical way for beginners like myself to get started welding. It also gives you the ability to grow and try different types of weldings as you learn more and want to expand your abilities. It's also great for experienced welder as it provides all the different methods of welding at an affordable price and in a compact package. So let's take a little closer look at this guy and see how it performs. All right, guys, so let's get a little bit better acquainted with this little guy. Talk about all the different things that it has. You see right there, it comes with an extra roller and three extra tips for whatever size wire you want to use. So it has quite a bit of flexibility to it. It even brings the Teflon tape and a wrench to be able to change all that stuff around. It comes with a stick holder, which uh, I'm not going to do any stick welding because I really don't know how to do that. I'm just starting out. So we're going to keep it easy peasy, simple as can be today. It comes with a hose for the gas, which again, I'm not going to use gas. I don't have any gas. I don't know how to do all that stuff. We're going to keep it simple. There is your shoulder strap. If you want to carry this guy around, you can have a convenient little shoulder strap and make it easy for you. I mean, at 13 pounds, that guy doesn't weigh anything at all. There is the earth ground, which obviously I have to use. And I'm going to have to set this guy up because you have to set up the front there for gas or gasless, stick or TIG or whatever it is that you want to do. I have to set all that up. And let's see, here is the uh, 220 adapter. I have 220 at my house, but it's not a plug like this, so I can't really use it uh, easily. So I'm going to be using 110 for this little experiment. And I'm going to use the flux core wire because uh, I don't have any gas. So we're going to go with the gasless method. That's what we're going to do. Like I said, keep it easy peasy. And there is the gun right there. And I already changed the tip for this little guy right here. And the roller inside I did not have to change because it already has that one setting. 
Now, opening this guy up, you notice that the wire holder is up at the top, unlike some machines where it's on the side. And that's one thing that I noticed when I watched a bunch of videos and stuff online. A lot of people said they prefer having it on top, and they would prefer things like uh, the Harbor Freight Vulcan and stuff like that, or the Harbor Freight uh, Titanium. If it had it on top, they would be much happier with it, but it doesn't. So that's the setup right there, and I'm going to put the wire in there in just a moment. You put it right there, it rolls right through there, and it should be easy enough. Open this guy up, open that guy up, and there's the little wheel right there that does everything for you. And this guy right here, and it actually has a wire feed button right there. Very convenient, so you can do that. On the back here, you have the on-off button and the fan for it and stop shaking table. There you go. So you have, you see right there, 110, 220 input. So that'll work with just about anything. There is your gas hookup right there. So very convenient, very easy to do. And the fan should keep everything nice and cool. And yeah, this guy right here, I left that open. So that was why it won't close. I'll take care of that in a moment. And on the front, I'll turn it on in just a moment. I have to plug it in. And then we'll take a look at that control panel. And you have the different adjustments right there on the front for whatever setting you want to do. So that's a real quick look at this guy. And it's a nice little machine, nice little greenish bluish color. And like I said, this guy has a lot of good reviews online. So for a beginner like me, obviously I want something that's easy to use, has good reviews, no complications, that kind of stuff. And then in the future, if I want to do TIG or stick or whatever else, yeah, I'll figure that out when I get there. But for right now, MIG seems to be the easiest way to go. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get this guy hooked up. All right guys, so here I am putting the wire on the top of the machine where the wire holder goes. And uh, I thought I'd show you how this goes in case you're curious. It's not that hard to do. If you've done this before, you know exactly what to do. So you don't need me to show you what to do, but I thought I'd show you for the people that don't know exactly how this goes, exactly just a quick little walkthrough how that goes. But anyway, I thought I'd bring you up to detail on uh, some information that I always like to bring my viewers alternative since I know a lot of you guys like to shop at Harbor Freight. And if you're looking for a welder at Harbor Freight, this unit is is very comparable to the titanium mig 140 and to compare the two uh, you can pick and choose which one is best for you but this one has some good features that the one from harbor freight doesn't have for example the harbor freight unit only works on 120 volt input where this one works on both 120 or 240 which may be more convenient for some of the people out there depending on your setup this unit is much easier to carry around since it is much lighter than the Harbor Freight unit where this one only weighs 13 pounds, the Harbor Freight Titanium 140 weighs in at 25 pounds, so it's heavier. This unit also has a longer warranty on it compared to Harbor Freight, and this unit costs less than half of what the Harbor Freight Titanium Welder costs, where this one's only 150, the Harbor Freight unit's around 500 bucks. Plus, this unit has the wire holder on top, where Harbor Freight has it on the side, and some people, I understand, prefer this design as opposed to the other one. So if you're looking at different welders and you want to compare this one to Harbor Freight, pick the one that's best for you, but this seems to be a much smarter way to go. And they both bring all the accessories that you need to get your welding job done. So let's uh, take a closer look at the control panel on this guy and see how that looks. All right, guys, so here we are looking at the control panel on this little machine. I plugged it in so you guys can get a good look at it. I got the wire all set up, and it went fairly well, considering it's my first attempt at setting up that wire on there. And I did see on some videos online where they say to be very careful with that, because that wire is kind of high strung, and it can get away from you and get pretty gnarly. So it worked out fairly well. And uh, here you have the control panel, and it has everything very easy to see, very easy to read. Nice, clear, sharp uh, screen right there, and uh, it gives you all the controls right at your fingertips very easy for an experienced user or a beginner like myself to be able to do just about anything you have right there gas or gas less uh, mig tig etc and everything has the little buttons right next to it so it's easy to adjust there's no menu to go through or anything the buttons are right next to each one and you select what you want the thickness of the wire, 2T, 4T, etc. This little guy right here, you control it up and down, and it adjusts the voltage, amperage, all that kind of stuff for you. And you can press this guy in and get additional controls where you can go plus or minus 3 volts in either direction. And that gives you a little bit more control for the experienced people out there. 
So there you go. It looks like a very nice little display, very nice machine so far. I think it's really a great little machine. Obviously, we'll find out in a moment when I start doing some welding, but right now it looks pretty good so far. So let's take this little guy outside and do some welding. All right, guys, so here we go. This is my first attempt ever at welding. Okay, so don't laugh too much. I know it's going to be hilarious for you guys that know how to weld, but I got to tell you, I've never done this before, so I'm going in totally blind. And I do appreciate any comments that you guys want to give me on this video now on my technique, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, uh, improvements, changes, modifications, whatever you want to mention. I certainly do appreciate it. Just be kind, be gentle, okay? Uh, anyways, I appreciate the comments that you guys have given me on other videos for example like in this case i'm using my plastic workbench and one of you guys suggested that i have to have a metal surface underneath the welding project to be able to do welding so that's why i put this uh, metal pan right there and i do have bigger sheets i just thought i'd start off with this and see how it works out and it does certainly help a lot i can see the sparks now flying all over the place which is uh, obviously a reason to have the metal covering on there when you're welding i didn't even think about that before so obviously your comments are very helpful and very important to me so I'm giving this the old college try and I got to tell you I have to make some adjustments and some improvements because like in this case you see I am totally out in left field I totally missed it instead of welding on the joint I just kept moving up above it I have to adjust the helmet uh, darkness so I can see a little bit better I could only see a tiny little bit I had the welding helmet adjusted uh, by the instructions uh, medium range for welding I think I have to lighten it up a little bit more because I could barely see anything of what I was doing and I didn't want to stop in the middle of it make adjustments to the helmet etc as it is i made some adjustments to the machine to make it a little bit hotter because i don't think the welds were going that good and that's totally on me i'm not blaming the machine i think the machine has a lot of room to make adjustments and to make improvements and that is exactly where i need to learn exactly how to make this machine work out the best for me uh, I think it is totally on me. Like I said, I am taking all the blame for this. I think whatever I do here has to do with me, not the machine. I think the machine performed beautifully. It's doing its job the way it's supposed to, the way a welding machine is supposed to do. And I got to give credit to you guys that know how to weld and know how to make beautiful welds. It is not easy. This is really a difficult process. I mean, I've seen people welding on videos and stuff, and they make it look easy. I mean, I, I thought, well, you get in there, you start welding, you'll adjust it a little bit. You know, there's always a learning curve, but I think the learning curve is really huge. Not that I'm scared away from it. I'm still going to give it a go. I'm still going to try it, and I'll learn over time. I'm just saying for my first time, uh, this is total poo. This is garbage. I know I made a total mess out of all this stuff. But uh, like I said, I, you got to start somewhere, right? And I had no instructor. I had nobody to tell me what to do. So I'm just doing it totally on my own. And I thought I'd get a good machine. Like I said, it has room to grow. It has a potential for me to do a lot with this stuff. And like I said, you guys want to comment, uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong, feel free. I'll give you a close-up of the welds in just a moment. But I did get welding. I did obviously make it strong. I'm trying to pry it apart there. And it is not moving. So it worked. Right there, you see I'm trying to make it a little bit hotter to see if I get some better penetration. But uh, yeah, I certainly did do some welding, if you want to call it that. And uh, I am making the video go a little bit faster because it's a little bit too long. I'm not moving at this speed. It's like uh, double speed right now. So that's why it looks like I'm moving kind of fast. So you don't need to tell me to slow down. It's actually the video that is going faster, not me. But uh, I'll give you a close-up in just a minute, and you guys can give me suggestions and tell me whatever you want to do. But, uh, I'm, you know, like I said, I have no complaints about the machine. I think it did a good job. And um, for anybody that wants to start welding, expect to make mistakes. I can tell you that right now. But it's, uh, the machine did a good job. All right, guys, let me give you a close-up of my first welding event, if you want to call it that. I mean, I'm not a welder, and even I can admit that looks like absolute poo. It is not good at all. Um, I definitely have to improve my technique. I have to make adjustments to the temperature on the machine, uh, the speed of the uh, wire coming out. Whatever needs to be done, I need to try a lot of different things to try to get more consistency. And this is, I'm showing you before I clean it up. In a moment, I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to come back and show you a little bit better. But this is with all the garbage all the splatter all that kind of stuff and here you can see uh, from the backside I don't know if that makes any difference uh, some places I got some good penetration some places maybe not so I don't know exactly what I should have gotten there but uh, you guys can comment down below and tell me what's right what's wrong and what definitely needs to change all this so let me clean it up and we'll be right back 
So here we are looking at it after it's been cleaned up. Uh, you can see uh, it wiped away all the garbage and stuff, took a wire brush to it, all that kind of stuff. And you can see a little bit better of what the actual welds look like with all the garbage out of the way. It did get some welding. I did do some welding. I did get something done there. And it seems to be pretty strong. Like I said, I couldn't pry it apart. Maybe if I took a hammer to it and just went crazy on it, maybe I can get it to break. But uh, just my hand pushing at it uh, backwards, trying to get it to break, it's not coming apart. So I did accomplish the welding. The machine did the project that I wanted it to do. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of room to grow and a lot of improvements that I need to make, but the machine gives me room to do that, so I'm content as far as that goes. So if you guys are looking for a good quality machine that seems to do good work, even for a terrible novice like myself, this is not a bad one to look into. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than the ones at Harbor Freight, the titanium, and it brings you everything you need to do to get started at half the price. So comments, uh, suggestions, put them down below. I appreciate everything you have to say on how to improve this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.